morning, Peace Chapel. Welcome back to another amazing Sunday service. For those of you guys who do not know, my name is Nate Harris, and every Sunday I come up here and tell you guys about all the amazing things that we got going on here at this amazing church. Now, I'm so excited and stoked to tell you guys about this amazing app that we have been developing for over the past year. This app is literally next level, and you guys are going to absolutely love it. A couple weeks ago, though, I read that one of the greatest characteristics that any individual or any organization can have is the ability to adapt and change. Now, technology has been telling us for a while that we need to be adapting and changing, but the coronavirus has forced us to actually do that. Now, I know that we have been adapting and changing here at Peace Chapel over the past couple of weeks, and you guys as a congregation have done an amazing job at it. But I have to add something to this, okay? I know we've been watching our, our pastor on YouTube, and we've been getting our news and events about Peace Chapel on Facebook, and we're over here donating online, and now we're over here doing our life groups in Zoom. We are literally everywhere, and I know it's stressful for you guys. With our app, it's literally an all-in-one stop shop. On there, we have prayer boards. You'll be able to watch the pastor's sermons on there. You'll be able to access our social media profiles, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You'll be able to check out events because there'll be a calendar on there. There'll be a Bible on there. It's literally an all, you can give on there too. It's an all-in-one stop shop. You guys are going to absolutely love it. But I know in your head right now, you're like, oh my gosh, another thing I got to download, another password I got to have. Do not worry. Don't be scared. I got you guys. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to download this app and all the beautiful features on this. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so if you have any type of smart device, you'll be able to download the app. If you have an iPhone or Android, you can do that. So you can download it from the Apple Store or you can download it from the Google Play Store. But I'm gonna show you how to download it from the Apple Store. So if you have an iPhone, open up the App Store. If you look down here, I'm gonna click on the App Store. It's gonna bring me to a search engine. Here at the search engine, I'm gonna type in tithe.ly. Tithe dot l y i'm going to click on that first one that's going to be at the top and then you're going to see a bunch of apps that pop up but you're going to see a green one and you're going to see a blue one the green one is the giving portion of the app but we'll deal with that one later in a separate video but i want you guys to click on the blue one that says church app that's tide dot l y after it downloads it's going to say open when you press open open up the app it's gonna automatically open. Something's gonna pop up and it said, allow church app to access your location. Okay, so you can say allow while using the app, allow once or don't allow. If you don't want them to know where you are, press don't allow. But this is important that if you are in Peace Chapel, it'll be easy for you to find our church. So I'm gonna actually click on allow while using the app. And then another app is gonna pop up and this app says church app. Um, would like to send you notifications. So I would put allow because it would alert you when any important events or anything is posted on the app or anything important on the app comes up, it's gonna alert you. So I'm gonna press allow. Okay, so now you're at this place. And now you need to connect with our church piece chapel to have access to the app. So you're gonna go to the search engine right here. And you're gonna type in peace chapel and then you're gonna hit search. It's gonna pop up right there and then you're gonna click on Peace Chapel. It shows how far away it is. Then you have the op option to change what it's gonna show on your home screen. So if you, if you, the one on the left is what it originally is, but if you wanted to have our specific logo, press change. Now it has officially changed on my home screen. I'm going to press OK. Now here is the app. Now we have a lot of developing to do, but as you can see, the Bible in the top left corner, there's a prayer wall, the events section over here to, to let you guys know whenever we're having any new events. Life group tab is there where we can let you know where any new life groups are opening up. Um, you can write notes in there. So if you're watching the pastor sermon, you can you know write notes right there. It's literally an all-in-one solution. If you want to give, you can click on this heart down here and you can choose to give online or text to give and it will just take you right there over here if you click the top left corner you can see that you can send messages to other members 
uh, we can share the app with other friends or family members there's a lot that we can do on this app so i know that you guys are going to absolutely love this app if you have any questions downloading this app please don't hesitate to reach out to any one of the leaders and we will love to help you out but this is literally going to bring our church to the next level and we need to all buy in i love you peace chapel and let's enjoy this service good morning peace chapel we're so excited that you tuned in live with us this morning i'm sean Brazel. this is johnny ichi and eating is with us we're ready to go into worship let's go right everywhere you are you can clap with us you can snap your fingers let's go hey 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 i'm clowning let's go it goes like this Whoa. 
on, some people have believing on God for things. You have to make sure that you are reassured that He will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll never leave you in the cold. He's never not listening to your prayer. He'll never let you down. Come on, just encourage yourself wherever you are. Just encourage yourself. Say, He'll never let me down. Come on, we're going to sing this part all together. I just want you to sing it right where you are. It says like this. Let's go. Says, oh, I'm never going to let, you're never going to let me down. And you're never going to let, you're never going to let me down. one more time for those who missed it on the last run come on come on come on encourage yourself right now dry your eyes put a smile on your face with confidence we say sing it come on see you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down and you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down no matter what it looks like you're
such a good God. What's up, Peace Chapel? Are my Peace Chapel folk logged in? We're going to need some interaction from you guys today. We want you guys to be in the comment section. So I'm going to be looking for a lot of interaction from you guys. I want you guys to know that I do miss you guys, this whole social distancing thing. I don't know if I'll ever get used to it. Even me being an introvert, I need some interaction. I miss you guys. I miss looking out in the audience and seeing people. And so I can't wait until we can gather together in buildings. I want to welcome our guests who are worshiping with us for the first time. I want to say welcome to Peace Chapel. If you could do us a favor, if you're logging in on YouTube, can you hit that subscribe button below? And then there's a bell notification right next to that. We want you to hit that bell notification because we have content that we're going to be dropping throughout the week. And we want to keep you in the know as to what's going on here at Peace Chapel. All right, I want to give a shout out to a couple of people that I know are watching us online. My sister, Pam Kimbrough. What's up, Pam K? Can't wait to see you again. Uh, my brother, um, Alvin Craig. I see you all the time, but I can't wait to see you again worshiping with us in the building. I want to give it up to my cousin, Amber, who is always logged in watching us online. You're such an encouragement to, you're such an encouragement to me. And so with. The Bible talks about this invisible war in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That our struggle, there's a struggle that's taking place, but it's not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against the rulers and against the authorities and against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. That there is a struggle that's going on, whether you believe it or not. There's an invisible war that's just as real as visible wars. It's just as real as physical wars. And there's a captain that's kind of calling the shots with this invisible war his name is Satan we call him Satan and I know a lot of people don't believe in the whole Satan thing you know because the way Christians present it sometimes it can come off a little spooky but you have to agree that there's something going on where there's evil and there's good and we believe that God is behind the good and Satan is behind the evil. Now, we're not putting Satan on the same level as God because he's not on the same level as God. There's no one equal to God. In fact, Satan is subject to God. He has to get permission from God to do things. And we talked about that early on where God actually uses Satan to chastise his people. Why he does that, I don't know, but he does operate like that. And so Satan does have a certain level of dominion over the world, and he can inflict pain on God's people. He can inflict pain on people, period. And so there's an invisible war, and Satan is behind the invisible war. He's the, the enemy, and he uses invisible weapons. And that's what we're going to talk about in this series. We're going to talk about those invisible weapons that he uses to wreak havoc on God's people. Weapons like anxiety, and we're going to talk about that today, and we're going to talk about that next week. Weapons like fear, we're going to di dive into fear a little bit, that there are people who are paralyzed by fear. Fear is a natural emotion, but we shouldn't be controlled by fear. We're going to delve into anger a little bit, right? There's a righteous anger, but then there's a unrighteous anger, and we don't want to be controlled by anger. And we might even dive into depression a little bit. We're definitely going to deal with 
the twin cousin of anxiety, worry, because there are people who are worry warts and you're controlled by worry and you're always worrying. But today, I want to deal with anxiety. That anxiety is a big deal. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, Paul's letter to the Philippian church and he deals with this anxiety thing, right? He actually offers a passage of scripture that gives a little bit of comfort to us, those of us who are struggling with anxiety. So anxiety, I found a simple definition for anxiety. Anxiety is an uneasy feeling, agitation, dread, or fear about what may or may not happen. Another way of saying that is, it's an unhealthy preoccupation with the future in the present. It's us allowing things that we're thinking about in the future or dread that could possibly happen in the future to disrupt our peace today. And so again, the Bible has a lot to say when it comes to anxiety. The passage of scripture that I want to look at today, if you have your Bibles, if you have your tablets, I want you to turn to Philippians chapter 4, and we're going to look at Paul's instructions to the Philippian church. Now, before we look at Paul's instructions to the Philippian church about anxiety, I want to give you guys a little background on the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, as some of you guys know, is responsible for writing over two thirds of the New Testament. He was one that hated Christians, and then he had an encounter with Jesus and he became a Christian, and then he devoted his life to planting these small little Jesus communities all throughout the Mediterranean realm. Paul had a desire or a strong ambition to preach the gospel in Rome. The reason why Paul wanted to preach the gospel in Rome was because Rome was a major population hub. And strategically, it gave Paul the opportunity to accomplish his goal, which was to, sp to preach the gospel and spread the gospel all throughout the world. And so because Rome was heavily populated, Paul wanted to get to Rome. Now, Paul did make it to Rome. But he did not make it to Rome as a free man. He actually made it to Rome as a prisoner. But he did not allow that to stop him from getting the message out. And that's a message for us today, that even though we cannot gather in buildings, we don't want to allow that to stop us from getting God's message out. In fact, I believe that we're reaching more people now than we were when we were gathering together in buildings. And so Paul was determined to get the message of the gospel out. And so he wrote this letter to the Philippian church church from jail. And he's writing to a group of people that have a lot of reason to be anxious. But notice what Paul says in verse four of chapter four of Philippians. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And to prove that Paul wanted us to rejoice, he says it twice. He says, I will say it again, rejoice. He says, always, when things are going well, rejoice. When things are not going well, rejoice. The word rejoice means to be full of joy. And he says, rejoice in the Lord. So literally what Paul is saying is that because we belong to Jesus, he's talking to Christians, because we belong to Jesus, we should be full of joy always. At all times, we should be full of joy. Now, I know that when we look around at what's going on in our lives and what's going on around us, we don't see a lot of reason to rejoice. But Paul is saying it has nothing to do with the fact that I'm in prison right now. It has nothing to do with the fact that th this virus is spreading all over the place. What Paul is saying is that we need to rejoice because we belong to Jesus Christ. And so he says rejoice always. And he says, again, I will say rejoice. And then he says, let your gentleness be evident to all men. Let your gentleness be evident to all. And then Paul gives us a reason why he says, because the Lord is near. That we should let our gentleness be known to all men because the Lord is near. What Paul is saying is that when trouble arises 
and it gives way or it gives a po the potential for anxiety, Paul is saying that that is an opportunity for us to be a witness. He says, we need to let our gentleness be known. We need to let people see that we still have faith. And then Paul says something that's extremely challenging. Paul says, do not be anxious about anything. Some translations say, be anxious for nothing. Now let's pause for a moment because I'm guilty of this. About a week ago, I dropped my guards. I used to struggle with anxiety big time. I'm telling you, this thing used to get me. And those of you who've experienced the struggle with anxiety, you know that even though it's an invisible enemy, it's something that can affect us physically, right? When you're experiencing anxiety, your heart starts beating faster. Sometimes you, you, you get shortness of breath. It can feel like you're having a heart attack. You start sweating. It keeps you up at night. And so I used to struggle with anxiety big time. But I beat it. And I remember one time when I was struggling with, with anxiety, uh, this was shortly after my grandmother had passed away from lung cancer, um, I started experiencing this pain in my chest and I didn't know what it was. And because my grandmother had passed away from lung cancer, I wanted to go find out what it was. And so I went to the emergency room at Hubert Humphrey and they ran some tests on me and they ran some x-rays and they said, we see a spot. It looks like a spot on your right upper lung. Can you imagine the level of anxiety that kicked in when they told me that, knowing that my grandmother just passed away from lung cancer? But what made it worse was they told me that we cannot confirm that it's a spot on your lung because we don't have the equipment to do so. So we're going to we're going to make an appointment for you to go to Martin Luther King, but we can't get you in there for another two months. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm thinking to myself, there's no way that I can go two months without knowing what's going on inside of me because I'm starting to believe that I have lung cancer. Anxiety is kicking in like crazy. And so what I did was I made an appointment to go to Harbor General in Torrance. And I went down there and they, they ran the test. And then they put me in the waiting room. They, when they ran the test, they filled my body with this dye. They highlighted my, filled my body with this dye so that they can see what it was. But I had to wait for them to tell me the test results. And so I'm in there and I'm sitting down on the hospital bed and the anxiety is just kicking in. And I remember calling Pastor Kennard and I said, Pastor Kennard, I'm anxious about this. And he gave me this passage of scripture in Philippians chapter four, verse six, that says, do not be anxious about anything. And so I'm sitting there and I'm trying my best not to be anxious. And I get up off the bed. They wanted me to lay down, but there's no way I can lay down because I'm thinking in my mind that I have lung cancer. And so I get up and I look down the hall and I see the doctor, my doctor, and he's down there and he's talking to other doctors. And in my mind, watch how anxiety works. In my mind, I said, they're trying to figure out how to tell me that I have lung cancer. But it got worse because I'm trying to shake this feeling. And so I go back and I'm sitting on the hospital bed and I'm trying to shake it, but I can't sit still. And so I get up and I look down the hallway again and I see him down there talking. And I said, they're trying, this is my mind just playing tricks on me because the enemy attacks the mind. I said, they're trying to figure out how to tell me that I have lung cancer and it's spread it all throughout my body. And I'm trying to shake it. The enemy is busy. He's all in my head because he attacks our head, right? And so I try to shake it, sit down again, get up, look down the hall. And I say, you know what? They're trying to figure out how to tell me that I have cancer and it's spread it all throughout my body and I have three days to live. I was tormenting myself because I dropped my guards and anxiety began to get the best of me. Well, I eventually I ended up beating anxiety and I became a person that could rejoice in most situations because I trust the Lord. And even when this whole COVID-19 thing kicked off in March, where it kicked off strong in March, I was still able to, to beat it and remain rejoiceful and, and, and happy and positive and things like that. And even talk to the, I talked to you guys about remaining positive and trusting in the Lord. But then I dropped my guards again because I started looking at what was going on on social media. 
I started looking at all of the reports of all the people that were being infected by this virus. And you guys remember before they said, oh, black people, it's not happening to black people. But then black people started getting infected by it and black people started dying from it. And then it started getting closer to home. That people that I, I know personally was infected by the virus. And my auntie, as some of you guys know, my auntie was infected and she actually passed away from the virus. And so now this thing is close to home and now it's keeping me up at night because they're saying that people that have pre-existing conditions could die from this. And so it wasn't that I was worried about dying, right? I'm not worried about dying, but there are certain ways that I just don't want to die. I don't want to be smothered. I don't want to drown. I don't want to die in a way where I cannot breathe. And when they were describing this disease and how it affects you, it, it takes your breath away. You lose your breath and it's like you're, you're trying to breathe, but you can't. And so I took my eyes off of the Lord. I dropped my guards and I was hit with anxiety. And that's why I'm calling this message, keep your guards up. We have to keep our guards up. Father, in the name of Jesus, you know how difficult it is for us to stay focused on you in the midst of trials and tribulations. But Father, you have been an ever-present help and a present strength in a time of trouble for a long time for us, Lord. So there's no reason why we need to stop trusting you now. You can be trusted. And so, Father, I pray for anyone that's struggling with anxiety that you would help them. In the name of Jesus, amen. So let's go back to our text. And I want to dive a little deeper this time. Paul said in verse 6, he says, do not be anxious about anything. He says, do not be anxious about anything. Instead, he says, but in every situation, every situation, whether things are going well or whether things are going bad, whether you're in the luxury and comfort of your home or in a hospital room, he says, in every situation by prayer, listen to this, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, he says, present your request to God. And so he mentions prayer and he says with petition and with thanksgiving. And so another way of saying that is by prayer and by praise that we deal with anxiety. He's giving us a strategy. The strategy for dealing with anxiety is prayer and praise. Why? Now watch this. This is the reason why, because when we pray and when we praise, and we're going to talk about this in a minute. When we pray and when we praise, something happens. He said he lets us know what happens in verse seven. He says the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. He says the peace of God, it guards now, one of the things about our enemy is he's always swinging. He's always swinging. He's always, he's always on the hunt looking for people that he can ruin. And what Paul is saying is that what guards us from his attacks, because he's always attacking our mind. That's what happened when I was in the hospital and I thought I had cancer. He was attacking my mind. What Paul is saying is what guards our minds and our hearts our minds and our emotions, he says what guards that is the peace of God. The peace of God is what guards. And what the way that we get the peace of God is through prayer and through praise. Through prayer and through praise. And so if you're experiencing anxiety right now, and this could happen to anybody, I don't care how much you know about the Bible, I don't care how holy you think you are, anxiety can hit every one of us. And if you're experiencing anxiety right now, what, you, what, you, what you're feeling right now is panic. That's what you feel. What you feel is panic. That's what happened when I dropped my guards. I felt panic. But what you want is peace. You want God's peace. And so if you're taking notes, in fact, I want you to write this down because Paul gives us a strategy. And Paul's strategy is this. Prayer plus praise is the pathway to peace. 
This is so powerful. Don't miss this. Prayer plus praise is the pathway to peace, and peace is what guards our hearts and our minds. And so we have to pray and we have to praise. When anxiety attacks, listen to me, when anxiety attacks, and it will attack, do not drop your guards. That's why we always must pray and we always must praise. What does it mean to pray? That's us communicating to God. Every time you're tempted to worry, you need to start praying. See, some people, they look at prayer as a last resort. I've done everything that I can do. I can't do anything else. I'm just going to pray. Prayer is not a last resort. Prayer is a first line of offense and prayer is a first line of defense. And so we have to keep our guards up. A lot of you guys don't know this, but I used to train for boxing. I didn't train because I wanted to be a great boxer. I just trained because I wanted to learn how to defend myself. And I used to train at the Broadway Boxing Gym. My trainer was Percy Snow. And one of the things that Percy taught me early on was that you have to keep your guards up. You cannot drop your guards because if you drop your guards, now your vulnerable parts are exposed and your enemy wants to catch you on the chin because if he catches you on the chin, he has you days. And that's what Satan will do. He doesn't need a lot. He's always swinging. And so if he can catch us with one of his punches, now he has his days and now we, we're not thinking right. And we start making dumb moves. We start making foolish moves because we're dazed. And so we have to keep our guards up. And I know how difficult it could be with all of the stuff that's going on around us, right? And you, I mean, some of you guys are not anxious about what's going on with COVID-19. But some of you guys are anxious about what's going on in your relationships. Some of you guys are anxious about your marriage. And because of COVID-19, you've gotten closer to your mate, right? Because we can't go anywhere. And so now you're discovering that y'all don't even like each other. And that's creating a level of anxiety, right? Some of you guys are anxious about your finances. Now, you're not worried about catching the virus, but you're worried about whether or not the, the company that you work for will ever bounce back from this, whether or not you're going to be affected financially from this. And so you're anxious about that. Some of you are anxious about your wayward children, that you see them going down a path. That's going to end in destruction. You've seen this before. You're not as attached to what they're doing as they are, but you're attached to them. And you can see that they're headed down a dangerous path and you're anxious about that. I want you to know that God is near. That's what Paul said. He says the Lord is near and God will give you a level of peace that surpasses all understanding. And you can become a witness. I'll never forget when Brother Hall was in the hospital. You guys know Ed Hall. This is his father. You know Sister Hall. This was her husband. He was in the hospital. They had diagnosed him with cancer. One of the greatest dudes that I ever met. Love brother, Ed, uh, brother Steve Hall. He was a deacon here at this church. A gentle man. His son Ed is just like him. We love you, Ed. Shout out to my man, Ed, who's watching the broadcast also. But I remember when I was on my way to the hospital after we had got the news, and I'm sitting in the hospital parking lot, and I'm rehearsing what I want to say to uh, Brother Hall because I, I want to come up with something to say that's going to comfort him and encourage him. And I'm just in the car, and I'm wrestling with this, and I'm, I'm getting anxious. And, and I remember walking into the hospital room, and as soon as I walked in, he began to encourage me. And I'm like, how is it that this man can encourage me when he's the one that's laying in the hospital bed and they said that his cancer is terminal? And the reason why he was able to encourage me, and this strengthened my faith, by the way, was because he had the peace of God. And this peace surpasses all understanding. When people are on the outside looking in, they're wondering, how is it that she still has peace when her husband just walked out on her? How is it that he still has peace when he just found out that his wife was cheating on him? But this is a peace that surpasses all understanding. But the way that we get this peace, the pathway to this peace is through prayer and through praise. 
Peter said it like this, and he's speaking to those of you who might be dealing with anxiety right now. Peter says, cast all of your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And Peter is talking from the viewpoint of a fisherman. And the imagery is this, a big net. You take the big net and you just cast it on the Lord. Whatever it is that you're anxious about, your car note, just cast it on the Lord. Your health, you're wondering whether or not you have the virus, cast it on the Lord. That cough that you have, see, it doesn't matter how big or how small. That cough that you have, you're concerned about that cough. He says, cast it on the Lord. Why? Because he cares for you. Listen to me, wherever you are, even if you're in a hospital bed, that's the thing about the Internet is that you can watch this anywhere. And this could be, and it, you know, people are going to look at this for many years to come. Wherever you are, if you're watching this, I want you to know that God cares for you and that he's near to you. He's not way out yonder. He's near to you. And none of this caught him by surprise. And so Peter says, cast all of your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And then he says in verse 8 of 1 Peter chapter 5, he says, be alert. We got to be alert. We go to sleep. We fall asleep, right? We're taking this thing lightly. We're taking things lightly. He says, be alert. We're so distracted. He says, be alert and be of sober mind. He says, your enemy, see, you have an enemy. He says, your enemy, the devil, prowls around. He's prowling around. He's always on the hunt. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And he attacks us and he uses invisible weapons like anxiety and he attacks our minds because he wants to disrupt our peace. He's like a roaring lion. He's always swinging. And eventually he'll make a connection on someone. He's going to make a connection on the person that drops their guards. And so we have to keep our guards up. We need to pray all the time. Prayer is a first line of offense and defense. Don't wait until the last minute to pray. You need to pray always. And we need to praise. He says pray and praise. When you pray, you're praying to God and you're making your request known to God, but you're also praising him and thanking him for what he has already done. God has been good to you and God is powerful and he's near you. And so we need to have the attitude that we will bless the Lord at all times. It's easy to praise God when things are going the way that we want them to go. But it takes faith to praise God when you're in the midst of the struggle. It takes faith to praise God when all hell is breaking loose in your life. But that's what we are called to do, that we are called to praise God. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord shall forever and always be praised. The enemy hates when we praise God. It drives him crazy and he continues to assault us, but we have to continue to pray and we have to continue to praise. Do not drop your guards. That's what I did. I dropped my guards and he caught me with one of his shots and he had me all dazed. And I started thinking that I was going to die and they weren't going to have enough ventilators in the hospital. And I was going to I was going to die because I wouldn't be able to breathe. He started putting all these things in my mind. That's what he does. But then I was reminded of the words of the Apostle Paul. Those same words that my pastor, Pastor Kennard, gave me when I was anxious about that pain in my chest. He said, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious about no thing. There's never a reason to be anxious. It solves absolutely nothing. And so instead of being anxious, I'm going to pray to God. And I'm not talking about these general prayers. I'm going to get specific with God. I'm struggling. I'm worried a little bit. I need you to kick in, Lord. I need you to step in. We're getting real with God and then praising him. Lord, you come through for me in the past. There's no reason for me to believe that you won't come through for me now. 
And even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. If God's will is for me to die, I die. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I know that that's difficult for some people to wrap their minds around. But death is not the worst thing that could happen. And so we must pray and we must praise and we must keep our guards up. I want to pray for you. Wherever you are. You're watching this broadcast from your couch in the living room. Perhaps you're watching this broadcast from your kitchen or maybe you're laying in the bed watching this broadcast. I want to pray for you. And as I begin to pray for you, I want to remind you of something. That the Lord is near and he cares for you. There's nothing that you will ever face in life that's bigger than God. If we exalt the problem, we diminish God. Big problem, little God. Big God, little problem. He's near and he's able. Father, in the name of Jesus, you know how difficult it is for us to live in this world. This world is dangerous. If we live long enough, then perhaps we will end up getting a disease. We're going to die. Everybody is going to die. The death rate is one per person. All of us have an appointment with death. But we know that death is not final, that we will spend eternity somewhere. And so, Lord, I want to lift up those who are watching this broadcast that don't know you as Savior. They have not embraced Jesus Christ as their Savior. I want to pray for their salvation. If you're watching this broadcast and you're not a Christian, and you want to become a Christian, you can become a Christian. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Father, he's your heavenly father. He's not just your your God by creation, but he's your heavenly father. Because of Jesus, you can have a relationship with him as father. And so say, Father, I am a sinner, and I stand in need of a savior. I cannot do this thing on my own. I confess that I have sinned. I am a sinner and I fall short of your glory. I'm ready right now to embrace and accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I'm trusting in his finished work on the cross. And so I'm inviting Jesus to come into my life. Jesus, will you come in? I'm welcoming you in and I want you to be my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, we want to support you. You don't have to be a part of Peace Chapel. We can help you to find another Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church, but you need a church family. And so I want you to become a part of our community so that we can provide some support for you. And so what I'm asking you to do is to text Peace Chapel, that's all one word, to 31996. Again, text text Peace Chapel to 31996. And then we want to provide you with some direction. We have some things that we can share with you that will help you with your next step. You need to make another step. That it's one thing to become a Christian, but it's another thing to become a disciple. We want to help you with this process. And then for those of you who are struggling with anxiety, remember the words of the Apostle Paul, and I put it in my words, and that is that we need to pray and we need to praise. We need to keep our guards up. Before we move on to our worship, I do want to thank those who have been supporting us digitally. Even though we cannot meet physically, we still have financial obligations. You guys know that we're not a begging church. I don't even like asking people for money, but we do have obligations. We do have, we still have electricity bill. We still have a water bill. We still have things that we have to pay and we want to do ministry. And you guys know we are doing ministry. We're here every single day from four to six, passing out dinners to those who don't have. And we want to ramp up our ministry. We want to, we want to take our ministry global. We believe that we can do that. And so when you give to Peace Chapel, you're giving through Peace Chapel. So I want to thank those who have been supporting us online. Our online giving is up. God bless you. But I also want to ask those 
who have not been supporting us to pray about supporting us. Because again, when you give to Peace Chapel, you're giving through Peace Chapel. And we have a couple of ways that you can support us financially. One is through text to give. You can text give to 562-379-51-5157. That's text give to 562-379-5157. Or you can give to us on Cash App. And the Cash App is a dollar sign and Peace Chapel. And just know that your money is going towards furthering God's kingdom. And so remember, Peace Chapel, we don't need to be anxious about anything because our God is in control. Like my brother Alvin says, he is large and in charge. Let's worship together. God bless you. Your love so great, Jesus in all things. I've seen a glimpse of your heart a million years. Still I'll be singing. How can I praise you enough? How can I praise you enough? You are the Lord. Love is life. 